And then let's talk a little bit about uh, India, Hemant. You are here uh, and you're going to be uh, uh, touring India for the next few days. Uh, I want to understand from you what gives you confidence, what gives you hope and optimism about the India story and what the India portfolio for you looks like. We are incredibly excited about the opportunity in India. First of all, if you think about the last few years, there are many proof points of great companies that have been built. India has done a terrific job of developing platforms in a way that they actually spur innovation and ecosystems, uh, starting with uh, UPI and, and uh, Aadhaar. And uh, when, when you think about the geopolitics of it all, and I've written about this recently with Fareed hmm. Zakaria, uh, we think the US-India corridor is incredibly strategic and it's going to create a lot of value when it comes to innovation and technology. And our perspective is um, to bring a lot of the learnings we've had in our core areas of focus to India, help build companies here, learn from the innovation that gets uh, created here and then bring that back into the US. And I think that innovation cycle is going to be spectacular over the next 10 to 20 years. So what is that going to mean in terms of the kinds of bets that you intend to make? Uh, you know, you, you gave us an example of the fintech space where really uh, I think uh, it would be fair to say that, uh, that Indian companies have taken the lead uh, today. But, you know, which are the other spaces that look exciting for you uh, to experiment with, to invest in, and and, as you said, take the India model and, and take it outside of India. The, the four areas that the firm is really focused on are AI, as we discussed. It's around uh, fintech. Um, it's around health care. It's a thesis called Health Assurance in the United States that we've been working on. And resilience. Uh, and our goal is to bring uh, a thematic perspective to these areas and invest in India with a long-term perspective of how we drive the digital transformation of India. We think there is a significant opportunity in, in climate, in ag tech, uh, as well as uh, in software uh, to uh, build terrific companies here that create local supply chains, local opportunity, local workforces. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, any pause at this point in time as far as uh, funding is concerned or uh, are you continuing to uh, sort of look at opportunities that look exciting at this point in time and put your money there? We're absolutely looking at opportunities. We, we take a very long-term view when we, we think about our, our core areas of interest. And the short-term dynamics of markets really don't deter us and shouldn't deter anybody from investing in innovation here. The long-term promise of what's to come here over the next 10 to 20 is extremely bright. And as you know, uh, the companies that end up taking advantage of that promise over the next decade are the ones that are going to be built today. So we think it's a really exciting time to be investing actively. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, just to talk a little bit about the India portfolio, and, and I know that you're telling your uh, portfolio companies and your portfolio founders not to uh, sort of uh, replicate the playbook of the valley and, and to learn from those mistakes as well. But uh, how much of a correction do you believe that we are likely to see in the Indian startup ecosystem as well on the back of what you're seeing within your own portfolio companies? I mean, staggering losses continue for a large number of these companies, albeit they might be valued as unicorns today. How much of that do you believe is likely to change? How much consolidation do you expect? What kind of a deep correction do you anticipate from where we are today in terms of valuation? Look, unprofitable growth is a bad idea. It doesn't matter if it's an up cycle or a down cycle. I think, you know, in, in, this, in this relatively capital-constrained environment, uh, the companies are getting more disciplined. I fundamentally think that's a good thing. The fact that these companies are not growing as fast as they were is actually the wrong way to look at it because we should be thinking about how they are growing more profitably than before. So uh, the long-term opportunity for these companies hasn't gone away. And to me, this is the time that separates the great entrepreneurs from the undisciplined ones uh, because they, they uh, are going to be careful with the cash that they have and they're going to be building these businesses with whatever the right growth rates are for their companies based on the physics of their business. Uh, and uh, we think those companies will be able to raise capital uh, as and when they need it. Uh, you know, uh 
Hemant, I, I want to understand from you how much pain you anticipate we could see. Uh, we've already seen a fair amount of pain, uh, especially layoffs being announced by the large profitable tech companies. Uh, do you believe that the worst is behind us or is the worst yet to come? I think the worst is really behind us. I mean, uh, as I think through our own portfolio or, or all the interactions we have with CEOs of the large companies, I mean, you know, few folks have been taking action around these uh, for the last 12 to 18 months. I mean, we, we went through a deep exercise in our portfolio last year, re-underwrote every company and made sure they, were, they had operating plans that were um, uh, more fiscally conservative and appropriate uh, and profitably focused, as I said. So I think I think now it's a matter of um, you know these companies um, uh, you know continuing to perform with that fiscal conservatism and and honestly some of them are going to have a hard time raising capital and that's just normal and if they're good businesses they'll raise capital at a uh, at the right price for the business and and uh, keep moving forward I I, I don't think uh, the fact that there'll be some down rounds should deter the the entrepreneurs and I don't think it should deter the investors this this happens in the uh, cycles when the bubbles uh, burst and uh, uh, you know the reality doesn't go away that most of these ideas and the technological transformation that many of these companies are working on is long-term quite robust. Hmm. Uh, you said you're going to actively pursue opportunities that look good uh, but you know at this point in time just within the VC universe there's a lot of dry powder uh, that people are sitting on uh, do you believe the risk appetite uh, is starting to fire up again, or you think that it's going to be at least through 2023, uh, you know, people are just going to sort of pause, take a breath, and see how this plays out? Look, if you look at a multi-stage firm like ours, we're very active in the early stage part of the business. Uh, and on the growth side, uh, these companies are still working through, uh, you know, their, their operating plans, what the... Um, uh, and growing into the valuations that they had from the previous rounds. I think, I think everybody has been waiting for uh, understanding where those multiples are to lie. We talked about interest rates earlier. That's mm -hmm. another thing, which is what are the right multiples to underwrite these companies with is also unclear because we don't, you don't know where the rates are going to stabilize. But I, I think as a lot of that normalizes over the next 9 to 12 months, uh, this market will open up. There's a lot of dry powder out there. Uh, the very best companies are able to access it even today. And, and I think, uh, uh, you know, the rest will work through the system over the next uh, year or so. Uh, Hemant, I want to end uh, with your India thesis. And I think this is something that, uh, you know, a lot of people are grappling with at this point in time. And I, I, it's, it's sort of uh, taking its toll on valuations as well. It is a large market. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And every sector you talk about, the addressable market is large. But the monetizable market and the difference between the addressable and the monetizable market is fairly large as well. How are you looking at this divergence? And, and do you believe that we're going to be able to bridge this gap over the next five years? I mean, what is your thesis on that? It's a great question. I, I, I think that's right. I, I do think we're going to be able to bridge the gap. I, I think um, if we just focus on the top of the pyramid, uh, and think of that as an addressable market uh, because the budgets are higher there, then I, I think we're not going to end up creating a, a digital framework for the country that uh, uplifts everybody. And so the question really is that for each segment, how do you think about uh, building these businesses and thinking about the addressable markets in, in, the, in the segments? That's, that's why, uh, you know, as much it, we think about build, investing in software or, or uh, fintech as much as resilience. I think building uh, companies around uh, things like ag tech and climate here and creating local supply chains is where the opportunity is going to be. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, long term, we believe the GDP growth here and, and uh, you know, uh, the per capita income will cross the line that, uh, uh, you know, makes the whole system work really f uh, quickly, just like it did in China from a technology adoption, innovation adoption perspective. And we don't think that's very far away. And so now is the time to build the, to build the companies that can take advantage of that, uh, that opportunity over the next decade.
So, Heyman, before I let you go, you know, the, 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 the themes that you see uh, playing out uh, through 2023, 2024, or the companies, both global and Indian, that look most promising to you, whether you're invested in them or not? Look, I think uh, themes, uh, again, um, we're very interested in understanding AI. Uh, India has a huge opportunity there because there's a deep software hub here, and as the next generation of software companies get built, there's no reason why they can't start here. Uh, this, for this next technological shift, uh, we think that's a big opportunity. I think, uh, you know, ag tech is quite interesting. We're seeing a lot of great entrepreneurs in climate. We're big believers that uh, there's a lot of local opportunity across the globe uh, around sort of building resilient uh, sustainable companies and uh, and healthcare uh, you know in the US there was a market failure uh, and COVID catalyzed a lot of change we're working through that we think a lot of that same opportunity uh, uh, is there's a, that exists here in India we're trying to be cautious not repeating the mistakes of how the healthcare system got built and scaled in the United States and do it with a mindset of health assurance from the start here so you know all, all these areas are really quite interesting well, Hemant, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks very much for joining us here on Young Turks. We hope you have a great trip here in India, and we look forward to seeing you in the Valley. But thanks very much for your time. Uh, that's it then on this edition of Young Turks from all of us here on the team. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For now, it's a wrap.